Welcome to CityWise. I'm your host, Tiana Stevens. CityWise is produced by the City of Rochester to shine a spotlight on city living at its best. Well, Mayor Lovely Warren and the Rochester Police Department are actively seeking ways to strengthen the relationship between officers and the community. To this end, Wayne Harris was appointed Deputy Chief of Community Engagement and Relations last summer, and since then he's been working to fully engage every segment of our community. Deputy Chief, thanks so much for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. So you're new to the title, but you're you're coming up on 30 years with the department, so this is nothing new to you, and you're very well known in the community. Um, when people say community policing, what does that mean? So community policing is really us getting back to the neighborhoods that we came from. It's, it's mm -hmm. us um, establishing ourselves and being recognized as neighbors and partners in the community and um, community members. So it's us working in partnership and collaboration with all aspects of a community to make sure um, Rochester can be as healthy as it can be. Mm -hmm. And. Um Mayor Warren's first order of business was to reorganize the police department from two large sections into more neighborhood-based sections. Um, in fact, a report uh, was just released about that. How's that program going? Actually, it's going very well. We just completed the evaluation for it, and um, I, I guess you can look at it as phase one was mm -hmm. completed. It was a reorganization in place where we separated the personnel that we have into mm -hmm. the five patrol sections that we're currently operating out of. Phase two will be the establishment of actual um, locations within the community. Um, right now they're still on North Clinton Avenue and, uh, and on J Street. Mm -hmm. And how does the, the new model foster more community engagement? So the workload analysis that went into the reorganization sort of shrunk our areas of operation, our individual areas of operations. In other words, mm -hmm. a beat officer now has a smaller geographic area to police, but okay. it's designed so that they can spend more time proactively getting to know the residents there and addressing the problems that exist in that area. Mm -hmm. Another big um, initiative was the body camera rollout yes. um, last year and now we're fully, every officer has a body camera, is that right? We have about 480 cameras out there right okay. now. Um, so all of patrol has them and okay. we're now starting to look at how we can expand our program a little bit further. Mm -hmm. um, so far and the program's been pretty successful. Why, why are body cameras so important when we talk about building trust in the community? Because I, I th the idea is that being able to get the officer's perspective, um, having video evidence of what occurred, it eliminates that he said, she said sort of scenario so mm -hmm. that you know, what you see on the camera is, is what occurred. So um, research has shown that not only does it uh, provide a very accurate depiction of what's occurred between police officers, but it also decreases the um, the complaints against police officers. It it contributes to the transparency. In other words, it fosters trust in the community. They feel mm -hmm. as though that um, what the police are telling them occurred is actually what occurred. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we've seen across the country police community relations, real hot issue um, around the nation. What was the first thing that you did after stepping into office to assess what were Rochester's needs? So very shortly after I was placed in this uh, position, uh, Councilman McFadden convened a, a hearing where many members from the community came and were very vocal as to how they thought and what they felt about the Rochester Police Department. Right. And I think in, in response to that, or partially in response to that, the mayor thought it was a good idea to send me out into the community. She called it her 90-day engagement or 90-day mm -hmm. initiative um, to go out into the community and bring back specifics on how people felt. What I mean, we heard so much in the council hearing that she right. felt, okay, if you had that much to say in, in council, let's go out and hear directly from mm -hmm. them. But to also bring back recommendations on what the community felt we needed to improve upon. Mm -hmm. So what did that engagement look like? I know you were out in the community hosting many meetings, dozens of meetings all around the city. I did, uh, and I wa we, we actually used a number of strategies. Okay. Um, the first one was a telephone town hall. 
where we reached out to about 12,000 people in the Rochester community. The mm -hmm. um, program is, is very efficient. It, it reaches out to people by phone and invites them to take part, mm -hmm. um, calls them back the next day to say, okay, please, we're going to be calling you tomorrow. Please, you know, be a part of this program. Mm -hmm. uh, after that was done, we ended up with about uh, 300 people that remained online for the entire program. 1,600 people about that um, called in and okay. you know took part, but we, we averaged about 300 people online for the whole event. They had an opportunity to interact directly with Mayor Warren, mm -hmm. uh, with Chief Simonelli and myself to answer specific questions that pertain to police and community engagement and how they felt about the Rochester Police Department. Right. The next thing we did was hold a series of open forum meetings where we invited the community to come down. Um, we had developed about eight questions that started the conversation going. Mm -hmm. uh, we gave the caveat that they didn't have to stick to the questions. They could ask us whatever they wanted to ask us and that mm -hmm. we were willing to talk with them. And really the only ground rule that we gave was we wanted people to be open and mm -hmm. honest and, and to speak frankly and respectfully of everyone there. And to everyone's credit, they did. Um, we held a series of stakeholder meetings all around town and we defined stakeholders as you know individuals or groups that had an interest in Rochester and in Rochester's health that had a, a different opinion about everything. And we didn't just want people that were very um, pro law enforcement. Sure. We wanted an entire spectrum right. um, to get it all. So, what uh, were some of the findings of all of these efforts? Primarily, it was communication. It was us getting to know one another um, through everything that we did and all the the conversations that we had. What we mm -hmm. found was that there was a separation between the Rochester Police Department and the community. They didn't know us, and we didn't know them. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about things like uh, training and education um, as they pertain to both sides of this equation. Right. We talked about transparency. Um, we talked about youth engagement and respect and diversity. Mm -hmm. And out of uh, this 90 days of community engagement report that was released, um, a lot of action items coming, some already being implemented. What are some of those new initiatives? So we, we've done a couple of things. Um, we have a program called Bigs and Blue that we're trying to begin this next coming school year and it's mm -hmm. essentially big brothers big sisters right. but specifically for law enforcement okay um, we put together a police uh, community recruitment effort where we're asking members of the community to serve as recruiters for us mm -hmm. in other words to act as a force multiplier to right. you know find qualified or, or quality candidates out in the community that would be great police officers mm -hmm. and you know, train them so that they know how to advise these individuals that may want to join us, uh, mm -hmm. how to get through the civil service process, you know, how to prepare for the exam, sure. what it means to be a City of Rochester employee, what it means to be a, a Rochester Police Department mm -hmm. employee. Um, we're putting together a police training advisory committee where okay. we're asking uh, different members of the community to serve on a board that will review all of our training. Um, mostly to act as um, not only advisors to us but also advocates for mm -hmm. us in the community so that they can take back to their constituents or their friends or their family to say this is how the Rochester Police Department is trained but also to make recommendations as to what the community thinks they should or that we should be trained on. Mm -hmm. How has the community responded to these new initiatives? In my opinion very well. Uh, I think more than anything, they appreciate the opportunity to hear directly from us. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we did in all of the open forums was to say, you know, absent a project, would it be beneficial for us to come out and just speak to you every once in a while and, and touch base and catch up? And all of them said yes. Mm -hmm. Um, another thing to come out of the 90 days was transparency and mm -hmm. um, you've done some work to increase transpa transparency. I understand there's a, a portal on the website? There is an open data initiative okay. um, where anyone in the community can go online and view not only crime data um, but also what's going on with the Rochester Police Department and okay. it's a way that um, for those people in the community that have a question as to how many burglaries are occurring in their neighborhoods mm -hmm. or um, you know how many officers are working in an area that's that's information they can get through the open data initiative mm -hmm. open data portal sure um, what are some of the existing community engagement initiatives happening already in Rochester well, one that I'd, I'd like to talk about is Project TIPS. 
um, we do four, TIP stands for Trust Information Programs and Services, mm -hmm. and we, we do four of them every year. Uh, unfortunately, the first one was rained out this, right. this year. Um, so we've had one so far, and we have another one coming up, um, I think, the day this will be broadcast, <laughs> and then we have another one coming up in August. And okay. essentially, it's, it's an opportunity for us to go out into the community literally go door to door on the streets that we um, select mm -hmm. and conduct a survey that RIT helped us put together to determine how people feel about their communities. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the crime issues, whether or not they know their neighbors, whether or not um, they know the police officers that are working in there, and what specific concerns they have. Mm -hmm. We also asked them some questions with regard to our body camera program, right. whether or not they were aware that we're doing the body camera program and, and what their thoughts of it are and whether they think it would help. And at the end, we invite everyone back to a park and we cook cook hot dogs and hamburgers and we have a DJ out there and City Rec is out there and mm -hmm. we also bring every service entity that um, is available to come down and offer services to all the community members. It's free. Mm -hmm. um, this is also done, uh, in fact, was the brainchild of Gary Mervis from Camp, Camp Good Days and Special okay. Times. James McCauley is the person that actually runs it. And it came about by way of an incident that occurred at Dewey Driving Park a number of years ago where Gary felt that um, there wasn't a whole lot of community response and assistance given to the Rochester Police Department as a result of a homicide. Mm -hmm. um, final question. Sure. Why is this so important in Rochester? <sighs> because there's not a law enforcement agency on the planet that can effectively police their area without working in collaboration and in partnership with the community that they serve. Mm -hmm. So if there's a divide and if there's um, a uh, sense of mistrust between the community and that agency, then you can't effectively police it. So for all that we're doing, it's, it's designed to enhance that. It's right. designed to build that partnership and to build that sense of community of, for us all. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your you're time today. You're very welcome. Today. Thank you for having me. If you have any questions about community policing or you're interested in getting involved with engagement efforts, you can contact Deputy Chief Wayne Harris by email at RPD Empowers Rochester at cityofrochester.gov or give him a call at 585-428-7033.